into your prayer closet, one word from heaven, you come out bold as a little. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's all about hearing the master speak. Yes. Are you hearing? Good preaching. When I was a child, I thought as a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. So here's the thing. When I was a lamb, not a sheep, when I was a lamb, I thought as a lamb, I spoke as a lamb, I bleated like a lamb. But when I became a sheep, I put away lambish things. It's time to grow up in the Lord. We're coming upon perilous times. A friend of mine named Corin, a dear sister in the Lord, one night she had a dream. And in the dream, she saw a minefield before her. And in the dream, the Lord had revealed where the mines were at. And because she could see them by the gift of the Spirit, she was able to lead a troop on through the minefield safely. Now, they couldn't see them because she was operating in a gift to be able to see through the ground in this dream or vision that she had. On another night, she approached the minefield and she had the group with him. And the Lord says, now I want you to learn how to hear my voice, not just to see what I'm showing you. And she said, what am I to do, Lord? He says, have everybody behind you follow you step for step. Have them step exactly where you step and not to deviate. Mm. Their job is to follow you and your job is to follow me. That's all right. mm. Mm. The Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow mm. Christ. How did he follow Christ? He heard his voice. How did he write two-thirds of the New Testament? He heard his voice. How did he perform miracles, signs, and wonders? He heard the Master's voice. It's all about relationship. Huh. I just keep hearing in my spirit. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. Put off the old nature and put on the new, which is renewed in knowledge. Yes. And as... She looked, she said, but Lord, I can't see what you showed me last time. He said, I want you to trust me. See, another word for faith is trust. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Trust comes by hearing God speak. One word from heaven changes everything in it. Oh, yeah. One word from heaven changes the situation because all heaven backs the word that he's spoken. Not the word that he's spoken in writing that tells us it's in line with the scriptures. Let me clarify what I just said. This is the word of God. Mm -hmm. It is immovable, unshakable. Mm -hmm. But when God takes the said word and he brings it alive, it's the saying word and it's a now word. It's a rhema word. Rhema word. Mm -hmm. And it releases action yes. in the earth so that it might be done in earth as it is in heaven. Anyway, as she was walking, this is what the Lord told her. I want you to take three steps forward and stop. She said, Lord... She says, all these people are in my train. And if I make a mistake, it could affect them negatively. He said, are you willing to accept the responsibility to go to the next level? Mm -hmm. well. See, hearing the voice of the Lord isn't just about you. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not just about you. It's about those around you. See, like a mother hen protects her brood. And she doesn't just walk out into traffic if she's a wise hen. You don't just walk out into traffic without looking both ways. And you don't lead the sheep. Or lead the lambs unless you're hearing the shepherd's voice. Mm -hmm. Have you been hearing his voice? My sheep hear my voice, Jesus says, and another they will not follow. Anyway, as she stepped out, she took three steps forward. And then she had to wait for him to speak again. And then he said, take one step to the right. She took one step to the right. And he says, now take two more steps forward. She took two more steps forward and everybody was following her. In the line, step by step, she says, do not deviate. And through this, 
she had to stop again. He said, now take two more steps forward and two more to the left. And she did. Everybody followed. And they made it through the minefield to Jesus. the other side. Oh. See, God is wanting us to be trained up in such a way that we hear his voice so accurately that can we, lead, we can lead others through a spiritual yes. minefield. Oh. You know, the economy crashed around the world in 2008, didn't it? Mm -hmm. Everything shifted. Mm -hmm. What if people in the church had mm -hmm. learned how to hear the voice of the Lord before the economy crashed? Oh, what if pastors had proclaimed from the pulpit, let me share with you what the Lord spoke to me that's getting ready to happen in this country. And you need to take your money out of hard assets such as real estate because it's going to drop 40 and 50% over the next three years. Yeah. Let me help walk you through the spiritual minefield of the economy that's about to happen. What if people could hear the voice accurately and they would tell you, that doesn't witness in my spirit on that relationship deal, that business deal. I don't think you should go out tonight with that group of people. Come on. And they all end up in a mess, locked up, car accident. There was a disaster, a fire at the place. And you and your children are attending their funeral instead of you are attending your own children's funeral. Jesus. Because you're a mother hen protecting the brood. You're a shepherd protecting the sheep and the lambs. Mm. <sighs> Peter, do you love me, Jesus said. Feed my sheep. What are you going to feed them? It's manna hot off the press that makes a difference. See, people don't fall asleep in a service when it's manna hot off the press. Amen. But they will fall asleep when it's day-old donuts coming from the pulpit. Over 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 Some six-foot icicle in a silver suit. His shiny shoes, slick hair. And his words don't make it past the third pew. <laughs> Although it's got nice homiletics and hermeneutics. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Got some letters behind the name. Mm -hmm. None of them are Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Heaven's not backing him, but the denominational headquarters are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Holy Spirit doesn't show up. We still got a pretty good show. Uh -huh. In the first century church, if the Holy Spirit didn't show up, all Christian activity would cease instantly. Sadly, I'm concerned that if the Holy Spirit doesn't show up or if he leaves the earth tomorrow, Jesus. almost all Christian activity would continue on unabated without him and people wouldn't know the difference. Because yeah. yeah. they can't hear the voice. They know something's not right, but they don't know what it is. Yeah. And the rule of the feast, verse 9 in John 2, when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he knew not whence it was come from, Parenthetically, but the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse they put out, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Jesus always saves the best wine for the last. If the book of Acts is not the best wine that he's saving for the last. What do we have coming? 28 chapters in the book of Acts. It's some good stuff, isn't it? The blind see, the deaf hear, the lame walk. The gospel is preached unto the poor. The dead are raised. Demons come out. The whole world in that area is evangelized in signs and wonders and powers and miracles and diverse gifts of the Holy Ghost, dreams and visions. People are hearing the voice of the Lord. They come out of dead religion. They're lowered out of a basket in the city. They're in perils with countrymen. And I mean, it's exciting. They go through a famine in the land. Abacus talks to Paul. This is some exciting stuff. But I've got news for you. That's a Presbyterian picnic compared to what's getting ready to happen as the glory of God rests upon the earth. Yes. There's no amen at the end of chapter 28 in the book of Acts. Lord, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It all ends with amen. But when you get to the book of Acts, there's no amen. Do you know why? Why? Because we're in Acts chapter 29 right now. Come on. Boy. And the Holy Spirit is writing it. Living epistles through your life and your lifestyle. And the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. And Jesus said, greater works will you do